All right, so we're going to talk about how to read a welding chart. And uh, first off, we're going to look at these charts. They're all pretty similar inside your welder. This one happens to be kind of based off of Miller machine, but inside your Lincoln or ESOB or Everlast or whatever you have, inside the user manual, there'll be a chart to guide you on how to set up your welder. Now, if you look over here on the left, you'll see a material type that could change for aluminum or stainless steel. Uh, right now, we're gonna be welding on just steel. Then you have different wire types. We're gonna be using flux cord E71 T1 wire. And when we're MIG welding, we'll be using one of these solid wires. The gas we're using could change on the wire. A E71 T1 with a 75-25 mix. And then the last row column here is your wire diameter. And we're gonna be using 0 0.045 flux cord E71 T1 with a 75-25 mixture on the gas. So now that we know what row we're in, which is this 045 row on E71 T1, I'm gonna guide myself all the way over and find the material thickness we're welding on. Now, typically, I'll still set my machine somewhere around this eighth inch thickness or the three sixteenths thickness because that's about how much weld penetration I'm usually trying to get. If I'm really on a thick piece of metal, I'll go up to quarter inch. Now, these thicknesses should be, you know, used with a little bit of caution. The manufacturer recommends that these set settings that we look at in this chart based on a butt joint no gap between those two butt joints and full penetration. So if you're in a T-joint or a corner joint or elsewhere, these settings could kind of be used one or two thicknesses above or below where you want to weld. So let's say we're welding on quarter inch thick plate and we're using our 045 flux cord wire that's E71 T1. Our wire feed and our voltage is 23 and a half volts. 300 inches per minute. And that's what I would set on the welder. Now, if I were welding a butt joint with a little bit of a gap, they were not, the plates were not touching together, then I might go down at least one setting. And that is 23 volts, 275 inches a minute. If I was welding any sort of thin tubing or something that was eighth inch or less, then again, I would jump down another column, uh, all staying in the same row of the 045 E71 T1 flux cord wire. Just remember, these are just a guideline to get started with. You can always tweak your settings. If you notice a lot of spatter with flux cord wire, which is often, it's usually because you have too high of a voltage and not a high enough wire feed. So you could increase your wire feed or decrease your voltage to help reduce your spatter. Also keep in mind that voltage is your pressure in the circuit. It'll help flatten out the bead. If your bead looks really crowned up on flux cord, it's probably because your voltage is too low. And your wire feed is penetration. So if you really want to drive that wire in deeper, you could always increase your penetration. Just remember to not go too crazy by increasing or decreasing either one of your variables by too much. A little bit will go a long way as you dial in the right settings. All right, this chart is in the front of the shop on the wall, take a look at it. And so you can reference it at any given moment. If you ask me what you should set your welder to, I'll tell you to refer to the chart.